right. we got everybody now, and we are ready to call it to order. Uh, glad to see a good crowd at South Jackson tonight. We're glad to be back over here. It's always exciting to come to the schools and, and have our board meetings here. Uh, Dr. Howard, I'll turn it over to you for our Pledge of Allegiance. Well, thank you, and I'm going to turn it right over to uh, Ms. Brookshire and the South Jackson students who are going to lead us in the pledge. We were able to borrow four of our student ambassadors. We are having our holiday market. I know many of you got here early and had time to shop. Um, the holiday market is sponsored by our student ambassadors, and four of them generously agreed to skip out of the holiday market for just a few minutes to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and then we will follow their directions. Hello, my name is Anna McKinney. Hi, my name is Emma Kate Fulcher. My name is my name is Matthew Bryce Patterson. Hello, my name is Amber Stokes. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank y'all for skipping out for a minute and coming to be with us. All right, do I have a motion that we approve the minutes? And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And approval of the agenda. Dr. Howard, do we have any changes or anything to the agenda? No, sir. Okay. Stays All right. And a motion? So and a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Dr. Howard? It's all yours. All right. Well, I want to again thank Ms. Brookshire and Ms. Pennington and all of the South Jackson staff for hosting us. We talked earlier that this happened to fall on the same day as the market, and we said, well, should we move it? We said, no, let's just join the fun. So thank you for letting us be here, and I, I did enjoy. You've got quite an event going on down there. And the community involvement in South Jackson is, is treasured, and it is outstanding. So thank you again for hosting us. And we're going to start this evening with um, a highlight of South Jackson Elementary School. Those of you who are not familiar with our board meetings, one of the reasons that our board elected to start rotating our board meetings so that we had an opportunity to go into every school community and to actually see what that school's really focused on. And so um, I'm going to ask if it's all right if our board members could step to the side, is that correct? And, yeah, and so, so that you can so that you can present. And we look forward to hearing a little bit about the highlights. All right, thank you for allowing us to highlight some of the good things that are taking place at South Jackson. Of course, it's hard to pick just a few, um, but tonight we wanted to share with you um, in some of our discussions at the end of last year, uh, our teachers said they wanted some collaboration time to work with our art and music teachers. Um, in the past, we had had art every other week and music every other week. So Ms. Pennington was creative in her scheduling and built in some collaboration time so that our teachers could work with the art and music teachers to have some extra time to integrate some curriculum. So one thing we want to highlight tonight is last week our kindergarten students presented a Christmas musical, Flakes, and we had all but about 15 or, or 20 of our kindergarten students present, and it was an amazing time, and we wanted to share one of those songs with you tonight.
many years, and it's hard to get 20 kindergartners coordinated to do something. So this was a great feat. And Miss Atha and Miss Baltman worked very hard with our kindergarten teachers to prepare for this. And Miss Pennington's going to share just a little bit with you about how we've done collaboration in art. As you know, our, our elementary students are extremely creative and they enjoy art projects, but in the classroom we don't always have enough time to do the extra on top of the content that the teachers are, are teaching. So we've been very fortunate with our schedule to have this collaboration time and our fantastic art teacher, Ms. Seifert, has collaborated with our teachers to bring in some art into the content lessons that the teachers are teaching. Um, for example, in fourth grade this year, our fourth graders studied Native Americans and they studied how the Native Americans used their resources and their environment to survive. And so after the teachers had gone through the lessons with the students, the students then had to research the different groups of Native Americans and how they used their resources and their environment. And then Ms. Seifert stepped in and worked with those students on how to create a landscape or a, a home that the Native Americans actually would have lived in with one class and then with the other class she they actually painted backgrounds to go with those homes so the parents uh, we were very resourceful and the parents sent in supplies and the students worked with Miss Seifert and they created these Native American homes and areas and we have two on display up here in the front for you to see um, that our students worked in groups and that was all of theirs Miss Seifert just kind of facilitated and of course the students um, then presented their content to their teachers and they were all excited about it. They would grab us in the hallway and they were just so excited to tell us about what they'd been learning. So we've, we've really enjoyed that project. Okay. All right. And the next thing we want to highlight is um, Conquest of the Realm. It's a reading game that we had a committee of teachers who met on Friday afternoons for about three months in secret because they didn't share any of this until they were ready to roll out the reading game. Um, and the reason they decided to do this is we noticed that our students weren't reading to the level that we wanted them to. And we knew that we had to motivate the students and get them energized and want to read. So they spent time researching uh, Lisa Wilbanks, Lindsay Lush, Sean Healy, and Thomas Wilcox were very instrumental in getting this planned and started. So they have done a video that we will be sharing on our website so everybody can find out more about the game. And also, um, they have applied to present at the Children's Literature Conference at UGA, and if they are accepted, they will be sharing this there. So we would like to present that to you tonight. that you would like to know more about Archer Stone, and I'm so glad that I've been chosen to give that information to you. Archer Stone is comprised of four kingdoms, Swamplandia, Prairiedon, Mott Range, and Forista. I am Queen Echo, guardian, ruler, queen of the forest. Archer Stone is also home to over 500 citizens, each one sorted by the Oracle into a kingdom where they vie for a chance to rule the realm. Hmm. Well, I don't want to be the only one to share the information, although I do love the spotlight or the dark light. Until next time, remember, 
I can see you from the woods. Okay. Citizens of Archer Stone complete one of the ten designated projects in order to earn hexagons for their kingdom. Projects range from things like comic strips, 3D models, and reenactments. Students work on their projects at school, in their classrooms, in the media center, as well as at home. I read, I read a book called Dog in the Dungeon, and I chose to bring this scene to life because uh, in chapter 4, on page 56, Tilly, Mandy, and James find the source of the howling, which is the dog in the dungeon, and which is in, which is in the dungeon, and that's why I chose to bring this scene to life. And how did you make your characters? We printed them out on the 3D printer, and we we glued we glued them down on into the dungeon. I like doing the conquest of the realm because we get to make fun projects like using telegami. I like using telegami because we can make book talks about what some of our favorite books after we've read them, and then we can get other people to like the books too. So I like to do Conquest of the Realm because it lets you connect with people so you can have like another project that makes someone else want to read the same book. Amazing work, Kylie. I'm so proud of your great reading. Keep it up. Oh, hello there. I was just checking my Google Classroom to post some comments on all the amazing work that my citizens of Prayer Eden have been doing on their Google Classroom. Let me show you a little bit more about everything that Google Classroom can do. On Google Classroom, the citizens of Archer Stone post their projects to be reviewed by the judges. Fellow citizens from the kingdom post comments about the work they see. Here's a movie trailer on the book Roller Girl that one of my lovely prairie children Kylie completed. When she posts her project, I can view it here. I can look at the work that she's created. And I can post comments that show her how proud I am of the great reading she's doing. Citizens of all four kingdoms, from the swamps to the forests, from the mountaintops to the prairies, can communicate with judges, fellow citizens, members of the royal court, known outside the land of Archer Stone as teachers, and even their very own king or queen. We can talk about our books and our projects and offer encouragement and help. Google Classroom is a great way to incorporate technology into our Conquest of the Realm reading game. I'm sure you're wondering how all of these projects are graded and who has the time to listen to, read, and watch student entries every week. Well, Archer Stone has a very special panel of judges comprised of our principal, assistant principal, school counselor, speech pathologist, and several teachers. These individuals look at student projects every week and use rubrics to grade and award hexagons. Greetings, I am King Pathfinder. I hail from Mont Range to the north of Archerstone. In our wondrous mountains, you find iron ore, and the iron ore is used to make buttons which go on the sashes. As students complete projects and earn hexagons for their kingdom, they receive recognition ranging from apprentice to royalty. Each Friday morning, students are recognized at the celebration when the king or queen of their kingdom presents them with a sash or button. Perhaps the most exciting part of the Friday morning celebration is when the Oracle awards the territory hexagons that have been earned for the week. Um, whenever you do one project, you get a sash and you are called an apprentice. And whenever you do three projects, you are a squire and you get another button and I have done two projects and I have done a 3D model and an author study. Good afternoon everyone, tis I, King Cypress of Swamplandia, here today to tell you a little bit about our game board for this wonderful game we call Conquest of the Realm. As you see behind me, we have four distinct kingdoms, Swamplandia, 
Forista, Mount Range, and Prairie Eden. As each of our citizens completes a reading assignment of projectness, they will receive a wonderful hexagon. There is much strategy for as you continue to move around the board, you can also have the option of choosing two of your own hexagons to take over other territories. If you so decide. We have other things such as fortunity cards. You never know when the oracle's gonna come up with something. You choose a card and maybe a hurricane or some sort takes yours and blows it away. It's a mystery, it's strategy, it's magical, it's wonderful. It's our game board. In the end, there can only be one who conquers the realm. And that will be me. 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 Extremely shy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, um, the students, the, the excitement about reading and the students on Friday morning, the excitement that we have out of this game has really amped up the reading in our building, and we're extremely proud of these teachers for all the work they put into this. But now we have whole building buy-in, which is the big key, and the students are working extremely hard to earn those sashes and to earn those buttons, and we just, we've just seen a huge difference since we've instated this game. So, yeah. all right. Thank you. Miss Pennington, I was fortunate enough to be here when they introduced the game, and um, you you wouldn't believe this room. It was just for faculty to help them understand what the strategy was going to be. But the folks that you saw dressed up in character there were dressed up for their peers as well, and they they did a phenomenal job. There's a lot of creativity and a whole level of energy that's um it's really exciting. So thank you again, and we're very proud of what's happening here at South Jackson Elementary School. So. Those of you, again, who are not familiar with our board meetings, we start our meetings with celebrations. We want to celebrate the work that's happening here at South Jackson, and we want to continue with some celebrations across our district and some recognition. So at this time, I'd like to call Mr. Jamie Dixon to the stand to recognize our East Jackson Comprehensive High School Rotary students and teacher. And Mr. Dixon, I think you've got two months two to months. do, don't Let's you? Yes, sir. <coughs> All right. And Mr. Cooley, if you'll join me. Lydia Kendall's heart. I don't know why I had Lydia on my mind. Lost my mind. I have the distinct pleasure and honor to uh, introduce to you Kendall Holland. Um, she's the uh, daughter of Phyllis King and Tim Holland, and she has a rigorous course load, as I was just reading. She's uh, taking Spanish 4 this year, French 3, AP Lit, Pre Cal, Women's Literature, Honors Humanities, Linguistics, Art. Um, architectural design and horticulture. So seriously, uh, a, a very significant course load. Um, some of our activities are uh, Sci-Fi Book Club, EJSL, Communications, FFA, Horticulture, uh, National English Honor Society, Creative Writing Club. And, and here's the thing I really took notice of. She's a martial artist, so uh, maybe sometime we can talk about it. <laughs> Uh, some of her honors and her awards, she's top 5% of her class, finalist at the state level YGA, UGA student of merit. And her most influential teacher is Mr. Chris Cooley. Would you uh, like to tell us why, please? Oh, uh, well, Mr. Cooley and I have uh, worked together a lot with both French and Spanish. And uh, we also have done a lot for uh, AP courses, designing them together. And uh, he's helped me a lot because I want to go into linguistics. And so uh, he kind of fueled that passion I have for it. Otherwise, it, I probably wouldn't be on the same career path I am right now. So he's helped me a lot, like decide what I want to do in the future. He's a pretty good guy. We'll keep him. <laughs> <laughs> she has uh, some college plans, some pretty significant ones. She has uh, got down here Boston University, which is pretty neat, and wants to go all the way through to her Ph.D., so there you have Miss Kendall Holland.
Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Come on up. The next young lady I have the pleasure of introducing is Miss Marley Palmer. She is the uh, daughter of Miss Teresa and Mark Palmer, and she has a rigorous course load as well. She has applications of biotechnology. She's dual enrolling with UNG and taking psychology. Uh, she also takes horticulture, AP Calc, Women's Lit, and Spanish 3. Pretty good course load there. She's got some interesting activities, vice president of the FFA, treasurer of the beta, member of the uh, National English Honor Society, EJSL, and HOSA. Do you ever have time to study? It's just, yeah. I got to tell you, that's pretty. <laughs> she's, a, she's a really good golfer. Uh, some of her honors and her awards are she's a Georgia Merit Scholar. She is the 2016-17 Homecoming Queen. She uh, has a health care award her freshman year, a gold medal, gold medal in poultry evaluation, uh, where you placed 10th in the nation. Mm -hmm. And that was just, just past fall, right? Mm -hmm. It was October. Great job. She's a golf letter, captain of the golf team, and an academic letter. She has chosen Miss Holly Knupp as her teacher to be recognized. Won't you tell us a little bit about Miss Knupp? Well, I have Miss Knupp for my study hall periods between my dual enrollment classes. Is that tea? Why should I? Why I'm a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she makes me coffee every morning and yeah, brings me food. Uh, but she's taught me a lot of life lessons this senior year. She's helped me get through um, my college applications and has really guided me along this year. And I'm very thankful for her. Aww. And I can assure you that uh, it's just not Marley. Holly does a lot for all of our kids, and uh, we're, we're very pleased to have her. Um, one additional thing that uh, Miss Marley has here, she wants to go to UGA and major in biological engineering. Mm -hmm. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. Very, very deserving. Miss. Uh, Jackson County Conference of High School, Dr. Jones, Rotary student, and you have just one. We were able to honor yours last month, so you've got just this month. All right. Um, proud to recognize Mr. Chandler Sane as our Rotary Student of the Month. Chandler, come on up here. And he has uh, chosen Mr. Jason Powers as his most influential teacher. <clears throat> uh, Chandler is uh, a young man of high integrity. Um, he's a scholar athlete and is a very humble young man. Um, pleasure to be around. He is involved in our school and as I'll go through some of his accolades, he's performed at the highest level both academically uh, and athletically. Uh, Chandler is uh, taking a challenging course load including the introduction to drafting and design, AP Calculus, Government and Economics, Honors Physics, advanced composition, intermediate lifetime sports, and advanced physical conditioning. Uh, as I mentioned, he's a very involved young man. Uh, he's been a three-year varsity wrestler, uh, three-year varsity baseball player. He's a member of our National Honor Society. He's a member of our student leadership team. Um, he's a member of our SALT leadership group and a volunteer referee for USA Wrestling. Uh, it's always interesting to me to see how a student lists their own awards. And, and Chandler chose his academic awards first and foremost, uh, including he's been a member of the honor roll every year in high school. Uh, he was, been, I was named the top scholar athlete in wrestling, uh, the scholar athlete award for wrestling and baseball each year in high school. Uh, he's a re recipient of the defensive MVP award and the Mr. Hustle award in baseball. Um, he was a uh, recipient of the Athletic Director's Award in Wrestling. He's a two-year team captain in wrestling. Um, he was a member of a couple of uh, really uh, successful teams last year, uh, including our Final Four baseball team uh, and um, our state runner-up in wrestling duels. Uh, again, just a, an all-around you know, great young man. Um, I was talking to Miss Sane, who works in our media center, his mother, um, just a couple weeks ago about how hard he's been working on the SAT uh, and came out uh, where he wanted to be. So uh, very proud of him. Uh, and again, I'm going to turn the mic over to him so he can talk a little bit about what his future plans are uh, and why he chose Mr. Powers as his um, most influential teacher. Uh, well, I plan to attend the University of Georgia and 
I want to major in engineering and go from there and hopefully go into environmental engineering or something along those lines. Uh, I picked Coach Powers because he's been there every step of the way since freshman year. Uh, he's gone out of his way to basically help make me a better person and realize there's more to things in life than just winning. <laughs> All right, and so th thank you very much, Mr. Powers, for the contribution you make to uh, the young people of our school. And uh, congratulations again, Chandler. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Um, last but not least, thank you very much, um, Jennifer and David, for sharing Chandler with us. He's a great young man. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones, and I, I again want to extend a very special congratulations to the students, but also to the parents. As, as a parent of middle school students right now, you see trials and tribulations, and when you as a parent get to sit there and see what your child has achieved, um, congratulations, because that, that takes significant investment on your part, and we know that, and we appreciate you letting us share that joy with these kids, so congratulations. That's outstanding. I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Blankenship at this time to tell us a little bit about our Excellence in Service Awards. This is a relatively new award that we've begun this year, but we are very, very excited about uh, the opportunity to recognize excellence in service across our entire community. So Dr. Blankenship, thank you. Well, good evening, uh, guests, members of the board, Dr. Howard. Uh, it is my pleasure and privilege tonight to share with you not only the December um, recipients of the Excel Excellence in Service Award, but also one of our November recipients who could not be here uh, with us during November. So as I call your name, uh, if you will come forward, if you want to come by and shake the board members' hands, come over here and stand beside me. I'm going to say a lot of really nice things that somebody wrote about you. Uh, our first recipient is um, our one of our November recipients, and that is Josh Whitworth. He is a young farmer teacher at East Jackson County Comprehensive High School. And uh, his nominators wish to remain anonymous. Our, our nominators have that option to either uh, make known who they are or keep that quiet. So here is what the nominators, and there were multiple, had to say about Mr. Whitworth. Mr. Whitworth serves as the Jackson County Young Farmer Teacher and teaches at East Jackson High School. His connection to kids and passion for excellence with the Jackson County Livestock Program continues to put the program on top year after year. After he teaches his classes at EGCHS for the day, Mr. Whitworth serves the Jackson County community by helping FFA members, farmers, ranchers, and agriculturalists with their farm work and projects. He brings expertise and knowledge to students' livestock and agriculture product, projects and helps farmers and ranchers better their programs by teaching livestock selection and care. In addition, he plans and hosts local market goat, beef, cattle, and market hog shows for our Jackson County Livestock ex Exhibitors. These opportunities have helped students earn scholarship money and gain Show, show ring experience, sorry, this is not my world, so I'm learning a lot here as I'm reading this, uh, show ring experience that is valuable throughout each show season. He has worked to involve community members and advertise the benefits of our program by including local leaders in a fun and competitive beef cattle showmanship showdown at our local beef show in February. I need to know when that is because I'm going to come see that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Our livestock show team has grown exponentially under his leadership and now boasts over 35 exhibitors from six schools. And the team is a, com a combination of the east and west sides of our county, along with the City of Commerce. You would think the students all went to the same school every day and were best friends by the way they come together as one. The results of his hard work with the students paid off last February at the State Livestock Show with multiple successes in both the beef, cattle, and hog show rings. Mr. Whitworth is an invaluable part of our successful agricultural team here in Jackson County, and he deserves to be recognized for his hard work and accomplishments, and I would say so. Congratulations, Mr. Whitworth. Our next recipients 
are Adrian Lockwood and Russ Mims from Bueller Quality Yarns. Their nominator was Debbie Mintz. So if you'll come forward. Ms. N Ms. Mintz writes, I would like to nominate Adrian Lockwood and Russ Mims at Bueller Quality Yarns Incorporated in Jefferson. Russ is the plant manager and Adrian is the human resource specialist. They work with our school system to employ students at risk of dropping out of school. We have had multiple students there over the last several years. The requirements for students to stay employed at Bueller Quality Yarns are that they keep an 80% grade average in each class and take life skills classes while they are at work. They have a small business owner come in and teach the life skill classes twice a month. They require students to save $25 out of each paycheck in a savings account to teach them the importance of saving. One of the life skill classes covers why savings is important. Bueller Quality Yarns start the students at $8 an hour and give them raises as they learn their jobs. If a student gets suspended for any reason from school, they are not allowed to work during the duration of the suspension. When the student is absent from school, they are not allowed to work that day. Students have an opportunity to earn money while they learn work ethics and life skills. Adrian and Russ instill high standards within our students that will go with them a lifetime. They are truly deserving to be recognized for their valuable contribution to our community. Thank you all very much for what you do. For that. We do this a little different every time, so if you come back next month, you'll probably see us do it a whole different way. So, yeah, it's good. Our final recipients tonight are Herb and Teresa Morrison with the Puppy Pals program, and their nominator is Judith Galt. For the last eight years, Herb and Teresa Morrison have volunteered as members of our Puppy Pal program at Benton Elementary. Every week, without fail, they bring their French Bulldogs, registered therapy dogs, to the school. Teachers select two students from their class to read to the dogs. Students are selected because they have reached their reading goals or because they need some additional encouragement to do so. The Morrisons have created special bookmarks with the dog's photos and a message saying, thank you for reading to Choya or Stryker or Mac or Serena or whichever dog has come to listen. We also take photos of them, which are given to the students as a memento of the experience. Students love reading to the dogs, whether they are non-readers, and tell the dogs the story of the book using picture cues, read their sight words, or read a chapter of their favorite book. The dogs are non-judgmental and are patient listeners who sometimes even give the readers a kiss. They gave me a kiss just a little while ago. The, student works, the students work hard to earn their time with the, their puppy pal. The Morrisons also volunteer as judges for various contests at school, donate school supplies every year, donate time and materials to our festivals, and are even playing Santa and Elf this year for our Mingle with Kringle event. Their children attended Benton and they have fond memories of their experiences there. Herb is a retired professor at UGA and values the importance of a quality education. I can think of no two people who deserve this recognition more. I hope you will agree and recognize their dedication and commitment to improving the education of our students. And we most certainly agree. Thank you so much for your contributions to Jackson County Schools. So we do have one more recognition tonight, and just to give you a little bit of background, uh, many of you may or may not know that when teachers um, are employed, they are part of the teacher's retirement system, and upon completion of their 
30 or so years of service. If they have um, time at, that has been unused, sick leave, um, that can go towards their retirement. Our classified employees do not have that option. Uh, they do have a retirement program that they can be a part of, but uh, they're not able to have any of their unused leave credited um, towards their retirement. So our gracious board has, um, has tonight is uh, going to approve a, an opportunity for us to provide an incentive and a, a recognition to our classified employees for their dedicated years of service to Jackson County Schools. So I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Hitzkus to come up and help uh, present this final recognition. So we have um, a really large check, although it's not fully cashable at this point. Um, we, but we would like to bring Mr. Tim Love to the front, if you wouldn't be so kind for us. So what we decided with our board support was that we would put together a program that allowed us to basically say, Thank you for your years of service. Thank you for the time that you didn't necessarily use from your sick leave. You could have taken every single day. And we wouldn't have blamed you if you had because there was no other option. But for that, we are truly appreciative to you, Tim, and we appreciate you blazing this trail for us. And, and this is something that we'll be able to pass along to the people who come after you. So this is a small token. And just so everyone knows, Mr. Love left us with 33.93 days of unused sick leave. And we do appreciate that. So here you go. I'm going to ask if the board would allow me to add another um, Excellence in Service Award um, that we have not talked about before, but there was, an, there was a banquet on Saturday evening that we've been frequent supporters of the Jackson County Community Outreach Organization, um, and at this banquet, one of our own leaders was recognized, and so I'm going to ask Mr. Jim Scott, if you, Mr. Scott, can you come forward? Um, and Mr. Scott promises that he'll keep it short, but as he's coming to the front, let me tell you, if you do not know Mr. Jim Scott, he is a treasure in this community. He is the president and chair of the Jackson County Community Outreach Organization, which has given over $167,000 in scholarships to our students um, right here in our community. And um, they have several award recipients, and one of them was our own. And so I'm gonna um, ask Mr. Scott if you could briefly share with us what you shared Saturday night. All right. Um, very proud to have this opportunity and on behalf of the Jackson County Community Outreach Board and our advisory committee, we're pleased to be allowed to be servants here in Jackson County. Uh, our mission, of course, is education support and community involvement and participation. And we're proud to uh, have this honor for 18 years. We had our 18th annual awards, Achievement Awards Banquet on December 10th. And it was uh, gratifying to me as a president. We worked hard to build this organization up in Jackson County. And as uh, Dr. Howard said, we, we have given $167,000 scholarship. In addition to that, we created another category of scholarships uh, this past year is called our Tech College Industrial Scholarship category, uh, $2,000 uh, $2, awards. And the vision on that was in about two years ago that we recognized in my visits to all the corporations in Jackson County, basically the manufacturing corporations and some of the distribution uh, centers 
that there was a lack of skill sets. And so it's our vision that we wanted to encourage more consideration in technical college education. And saying that, we had our keynote speaker, as some of you know that were at the banquet Saturday night, we had the Honorable Gretchen Corbin, who's a commissioner of the Tetra College system of Georgia. She was our keynote speaker, and she also alluded to that. So without belaboring uh, my pride in our organization, uh, our unsung hero award uh, this year will go to the principal of East Jackson Comprehensive High School. School has increased its graduation rate from 82% to 95.3, which is admirable. It's it's huge in uh, in that school with the difficulties that that school have had, and uh, it's just a huge a huge accomplishment. The school steadily increased uh, the performance of statewide uh, end of the uh, course assessment. Uh, the recipient has become involved in the leadership of the college and career academies, Academy of Jackson County. Student acceptance in multiple Ivy League research institutes, including uh, MIT in 2014 and Columbia University in 2015. Uh, the recipient has partner, partnered with many different uh, industries to provide simulation experiences for students. A good example is Kubota Manufacturing has been instrumental in the development of both the welding lab and site-based uh, training with many students at, at East Jackson Comp leaving East Jackson High School uh, to uh, gain specific certifications to uh, take them into, into the industries in, in our county. Significant as these, as these advancements uh, are, and this is a personal thing that uh, I, I injected into this because I'm out to East Jackson about 10 times a year. Significant uh, as, these, as these advancements and accomplishments are, biggest difference that has been made during his tenure has been a change in the culture of learning. That's huge, the culture of learning in an institution. He has embraced uh, innovative approaches. He's effectively in implemented a blended le a learning, learning model for the students. He has a hands-on approach where he works directly with the students. And I think I alluded to this at the, at the banquet uh, he reminds me a lot of a principal I had in Mayo Underwood High School in Frankfort, Kentucky. We always called him Bat Masterson. His real name was Bat Masson. But his approach to learning was the paddle and stand one leg in the corner or one leg up against the wall. This recipient's method of encouraging is very creative. His military background uh, has has given him a, a stern approach to to the problems that uh, that that school has had. On top of that, uh, you see the recipient in the hallways, and I'm always impressed with this caring atmosphere, uh, whispering in kids' ears telling the kids, don't give up, you can make it. We see him with his arms around kids. That's what I call, that's what I call a leader. 
That's what I call a leader. And each and every day he demonstrates concern for the welfare of these, of, of these children. He's empathetic, he's friendly, he's compassionate, he's a good listener, and he's a mentor to the student population of East Jackson Comprehensive High School. He is their hero. And folks, I want to tell you, he, he is my hero. He is my hero. And to the JCCO, he is our 2016 Unsung Hero Award recipient. Would Brother Jamie Dixon come up here and, and uh, uh, I don't know who has your... He your has his flag. I saw it on my desk this afternoon. You, you already got it? <laughs> yes, but, sir. Uh, I'm very proud yeah. of you. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. But... Uh, this is a great this is a great educational leader here folks thank you and i don't uh, belittle the efforts of any other principal or any other educator uh in the school system but uh th this guy warms my heart and so he was my nominee <laughs> to the awards committee and you, you they were going to do it <laughs> god bless you i appreciate it brother. okay thank you, thank thank you. Thank you so okay much. okay, okay. Thank you, board, for allowing us to add that. Thank you, Mr. Scott, Absolutely. for coming. He can he contributes an amazing amount behind the scenes to our community, and I, I really do thank you, Mr. Scott, for coming. And congratulations, Mr. Dixon. We are very, very proud for you and of Jackson County. All right. We've got a couple of quick awards left here, and I'm going to call see if Mr. Dennis Patrick could come to the front. We've got our clean, clean schools and our transportation, and both are very, very important. So our clean school awards, it's getting to be that time of the year, Mr. Patrick. Thank you, Dr. Howard. I like to mention at each uh, board meeting that uh, we have about 1.4 million square feet of space to clean and maintain in our school system, and we've got 55 custodians. So if you do the math, that's a lot of square footage per person to, to maintain and take care of. And uh, we're very proud of all of our custodians and all the hard work that they do to uh, keep our schools uh, healthy and clean for our students and our staff members. Uh, <clears throat> the November uh, winner in Division One for our Clean School Award, and Division One's our schools that's got up to 400 students. Um, I think this, this school has been a winner since we started this program, but uh, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Archibald, Maysville Elementary School is a winner again for Division One. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, they, uh, they had a score of 93, and uh, that was the highest score in November for any of the schools in the system. Yes. So congratulations again. You Thank you, tell Mr. Just Patrick. Just Definitely. We have an amazing custodial staff, and I know that I've said this month after month, and they, they <laughs> made me count up how many months it has been since they been winning this. And this is the 13th time in mm -hmm. a row that they've received this award. They work incredibly hard to make sure, as Mr. Patrick was saying, that our school is healthy and a great place for our kids to come, come learn. They think of it as a castle for our kids, and they want to make it the most pristine um, learning environment that our kids could come to every day, and we couldn't do it without their help. And so thank you for recognizing right. that. Thank you. Okay. Our um, Clean School recipient for Division Two for November, and uh, Division Two are schools that's 401 to 800 students, and uh, this school has won several times this year. It's East Jackson Middle School, and they had a score of 91. So, Miss Barnett, Miss Ayers, we want you to come up and speak, Miss Ayers. <laughs> Congratulations! Let's give her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but uh, Miss Ayers and her staff uh, just do a fantastic job, and, and I brag on her school. It's how many years again? Refresh my memory. I, can't, I mean, 20, 20, 20 years old. <laughs> and uh, you walk in that building, it, it does not look 20 years old. So, um, you want to tell them a little bit about people working with <laughs> no, you? Go ahead. Go um, we have a fine staff. Um, we, there's three and a half of us. Um, I get the half. I get the half to half. 
and the, and the half is her person. husband. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, we just all work together and um, make sure it's done. There you can go in their school any time of the day, and you will see these people working all the time. They never stop. So I won't let them right. stop. Again, <laughs> uh, uh, congratulations right, thank again. You. Thank you. Okay, uh, Division Three. Uh, Division Three are our schools that are over 800 students, and we've got two winners for Division Three for November. We had a tie of a score of 92. And the, um, the first school I'd like to uh, uh, come up is Gum Springs Elementary. I think Miss Hanley is with us tonight. And come up and uh, congratulations for November <laughs> for the school award. And if you would tell the group a little bit about your, your staff. Absolutely. I have a really hard working staff of custodians. I'm very proud to work with them and they take great pride in our school and it is a lot to clean both floors and, and everything. So they really are proud of what they do uh, Miss, under Miss Diane Lee's leadership. We have five and a half staff members, Larry Lee, Tammy Wisnett, Marsha Babb, and Mr. Bobby and Dennis Norris. And they do a great job. We appreciate their hard work. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. And the other winner for Division Three, this uh, this school has won uh, many times already since we started this program. West Jackson Elementary School, Mr. Johnson. And again, they had a score of uh, 92. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, our ladies are phenomenal. This is their ninth uh, win out of the last 13 times uh, since we went to the different categories. Um, they're, uh, they couldn't make it because they come in at about 4 35 o'clock in the morning. But just to talk about the job that they did last Thursday, we had our Polar Express night and we probably had over 1400 individuals in our building. And the next day when Mr. Patrick showed up to, um, uh, do their grading for December, <laughs> where a lot of people are like, really? But uh, they're like, come on in. Um, their score is a 91. They weren't happy about that. But, uh, considering that they had over 1400 guests there the night before, you couldn't even tell, um, a couple of spots on the floor from a little bit of hot chocolate, but outside of that, um, they they just are amazing, and they they really help set the standard for uh, what we're focusing on this year, which is exemplary above all. So, just uh, amazing ladies, and th mm -hmm. thank you for all the help. In addition, we also I failed to mention last time, Mr. Joe Persley, who's uh, one of our maintenance. Uh, assistance there at the school and he also helps the ladies to make sure that it's safe and in, if there's ever an issue he always takes care of it so okay. thank you thank you congratulations thank you. all right we have one more award and as mr farmer is coming towards the front and i think miss reynolds is coming as well you know um we recognize student achievement and there is a, a lot of research that there's a direct correlation between student achievement and attendance and uh clean schools healthy schools with a healthy climate, increase our attendance. And so while it seems simple, it's it's very important. It's very important that our schools are clean. And getting them there is really important too. So Mr. Farmer. Thank you, Dr. Howard. It's always an honor to uh, have someone come and uh, begin the school year who has set the standard for excellence uh, in our system. Uh, it's always an honor for me to come and recognize an outstanding individual in my department. And I just appreciate everything this young lady does. She comes in with a happy attitude, a positive attitude, and she was able to figure out how to put snow scenes that float on my uh, screen as a backdrop. So I was really <laughs> impressed with that also. You know, uh, but not going to embarrass you or anything. But I, I do appreciate everything that she does because when it's time to roll, she's there. She's dependable. She loves her children. And she makes sure that they are taken care of from the time they get on that bus in the morning to the time they get off and then back in the afternoon. And Ms. Kashadra Fields, I know Ms. Reynolds has some words for you, but I just want to say thank you. Um, we are honored to have you as part of our team and your discipline and your, your military background, which is what Ms. Reynolds is going to mention, is exemplifies the individual of who you are. And I just want to say thank you for all that you do, Miss Reynolds. Come with me. Be my friend. And I want to. 
We hear that she runs her bus like an army, and there's a reason why. <laughs> Let me tell you. Very young looking, but she has been a lot of places that I've dreamed to be. She's spent 10 years in the military. Eight was um, in the Navy. Two was in the Army National Guard. She's been places like Saudi Arabia, Greece, Turkey, Italy, um, Gulf of Mexico, Mediterranean, plus places in the state. These are places she was stationed at. Um, so there's a reason why her bus runs the way it runs. Um, she takes, David was correct, she takes complete care and has very, very little issues on her bus. But if there's something that she, or you, I'm sorry, if there's something that we need, she's there. Um, I called on the radio that I needed a child picked up. I'll do it. Little did she know, on the other side of the county, no idea. Gave her directions, she went, no questions asked, did it. That it's amazing to have someone like that. And we would like to honor you tonight and thank you so much for, number one, your service in the military and your service with us. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Hang on, you don't get to leave yet. Listen, thank you so much. got a gift much. for you. Thank what you. for me? It's all for you. <laughs> I want to mention one more thing before we uh, sit down. Last week we had state uh, safety bus inspection, yes. and one day it rained. Mm. When I say it rained, it rained, but that didn't ha that, that that couldn't stop us. We still had to do that. So our bay doors were up, and Miss Crescendo was part of that team. Uh, she braved the weather, braved the elements, bringing buses in, taking them out, getting out in the pouring down rain, making sure everything was ready when they hit that inspection line. So I want to say thank you for that also. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's a lot of celebrations, but I think these are individuals worth celebrating. So first to our students and our parents who joined us tonight, thank you very much. We're very proud of the accomplishments that your children have made and quite honestly that you have. And then certainly to our staff, outstanding teachers and leaders among us and, and other dedicated staff, we're, we're proud of the work that's happening in Jackson County and proud to be a part of the work. So that's all the comments at this time. All right. Uh, before we move on to agen uh, consent agenda, you know, it seems like as we move on into these these different kind of board meetings where we're not sitting here beating on budgets and stuff like that. We're talking about celebrations. Uh, it's it's pretty special for us to get to sit up here and, and celebrate and listen to the, the leadership, uh, the stewardship, and the really the great things that are going on in our county and, and the people that they're not only from inside our school system but from outside, how they've taken part in, in helping our, our kids get better every day. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the board for for what you do every day and for supporting our kids. It, it means a lot. All right, let's move on into the consent agenda. Uh, do I have a motion that we accept the consent agenda items one through seven? Moved. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that part is done. And do I have a motion that we move into executive session to go over the superintendent's evaluation? Aye. All right. We are going to executive session. <laughs> 